Now today's plan is to connect up the underfloor heating system in this room. You can see the room around me. Uh, it got pretty badly destroyed. I'll stick um, a photograph up here so you can see what it looked like. Uh, major reconstruction done here and a new floor put in. That thing gone across the floor here, that's a uh, thermal expansion break or something that the concrete guys left in the, in the floor. Uh, I'll show you a photograph here of the underfloor heating pipe layout and I'm going to hook it up now. So you don't always get to work where you want to work <laughs> or in the conditions you want to work in. But look, that underfloor heating manifold here, it's upside down. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so there's the manifold. Okay, and I have to pipe that up and install it in there. Now, I didn't do the original plumbing. I fixed a heap of leaks here. And, uh, but that's what we have here. Everything brought back to manifolds. Again, I didn't do this. This is all original to the house. But I did run these um, underfloor heating pipes, which I'm going to insulate. They go to the floor. There's six pipes, so there's three circuits in that room. And I'm going to put the underfloor heating manifold on this wall. So you can see I put a couple of level lines in. And uh, we're going to drill that and mount it now. Here we have an 8mm bit. So look, I need to put a hole here. This is a concrete wall. So I'm angling it down to steer it to where it needed to be. And then go in. <laughs> All the batteries are gone. Right, hang on. We can find another one. Now that was an eight millimeter hole and these are eight millimeter plugs. Years ago, I have a video <laughs> where I did this. You know, I put a light on the Makita radio. So the battery from the Makita keeps this light going. However, it's been um, abused and used and thrown in with lots of other tools. And uh, and it's a bit battered. I even dropped the car, or lowered the car down and forgot to take it out, squashed the light. Okay, so we're ready to put this manifold on now. They're not exactly light, like you could lift one, no problem, but. So I'll screw in, get that started. You can stand on this, it's just movement in the bracket itself, so that's nice and tight. Now let's organise some pipes. Now I'm not sure what you can see, I have my Makita light in here with me. So the way I have this set up is this is the front of the room, middle of the room and rear of the room. It's a very big room so I broke it up into about 80 metres ago. The way these get connected up is a standard compression nut, but the ring is different. The ring has a, a slot in it. And if you can see inside, it's got grooves. Right, and they bite into the pipe. Up on this end, we've got an O-ring, and it seals on the inside of the pipe. So, this goes into the manifold. This bit with the two O-rings go into the pipe. And then on the outside of the pipe, it gets squashed onto those two O-rings with that split ring, okay? So, we have three components, and that's how we make our seal. Okay, this is 16, 22, and 26 mil. So we've got our nut. We've got our split ring. See that? Okay, and then we have the insert, and that's it. So the insert all the way home and then to tighten it I've cut a slot out of the spanner and that's it and then
Okay, so I still have a bit of work to do, but we're getting there. So I have to connect the flow and return into this. And we're only putting six pipes into this now, so that's like three circuits flow and return on each circuit. Now, what I want to do is I want to drill another hole just there because I have another, another offset to go in. So let's do that. Great, so I have to put some solder fittings on the bottom of these, set it up. Oh, look at this. Another bleeding leak on this job, look. Look at that. Elbow not even connected. I have fixed so many leaks on this thing. Uh, because nobody uses that uh, disused sink inside. But, this one's not. This one is into the bathroom inside, into the wash on basin. And <laughs> the little bastards. Okay, so it's another one to fix. All right, so I've progressed things a little. So now we have to make up these pipes. So I have these soldered in, these are the same pipe. And we're just gonna make them on now. So we need a nut, a compression nut, and a ring, okay. Now we need a bit of stuff that's called boss weight. Disjointing content. Right, so. Right, so we'll hold the, uh, the ring there. Small amount. And we'll make these up. So make sure it goes all the way. I had to offset these pipes because of this joist. So this is a 15 or 20 year old house and it's had major problems. Now here's the second pipe. Alright, and let's just compress the ring. Okay, lovely. Now that gives us two pipes into the ground. And you can see them, yeah, just about, on two pipes sticking out. So what we're going to do is we're going to stick two solder couplers on this, two solder straights, and we're going to extend these on, and we're going to connect into PEX pipe. <laughs> Wait to see this. This is shit now. Again, this is not my doing. I can't rip out all of this stuff. I just have to make it work. So there's two one-inch pipes down here. This one here, and there's another one back there. I have to cut them and make them happen into these two. So one of them will be a flow and one is the return. I've got to figure that out now and uh, connect into the corresponding pipes. So here we go. So I have to cut into the flow and return, which happen to be made out of PEX. For that, we need a couple of compression fittings. So I'm going to use these in conjunction with inserts. But um, this is the lowest part of the system and the boiler is a bit higher than here, so there's no drain off. And consequently, I've got my Aquavac and see if I can't kind of breach these pipes and catch the water without drowning the place. Pressure's off, but uh, still water in the pipes. So here we go. Oh, there's water coming out of this one already, so here we go. So these are capillary fittings. They've already got some solder inside. Now I'm just putting in some flux. Okay. And we'll stick some on this as well. And this one. Now the flux helps the solder to flow. And that's it. This is very quick. So that's going to dry and we're going to set up this other one now while it's doing that. Okay, so we have an elbow going on this. 
it and we want these two to be parallel. And if they're parallel, where my thumb is, is where I chop. Right, so just put a mark there. Right, we're going to chop it there. So we need a straight through joiner. Okay, they don't take up any space really, so we'll just come back to there. So that's where we need it. Now normally I wouldn't necessarily mark out a pencil, but maybe you can see that. And then we would just put this on it. And head in the cutting direction. Okay, this time around we have two joints to solder on this one, so with this elbow. So we need to prep all these things. So we have three circuits only on the underfloor heating. The rest of it, these other five, they're going to be connected sometime in the future. But for now, this is the underfloor heating and it's heating this room. So this room got renovated because it was in poor shape. Now there's big echo in this room so I'll try and keep the voice down a bit. But I've just done the underfloor heating and I'm bringing up the temperature now. Um, floor is reasonably dry but not fully dry so I'm only going to bring it up about 5 degrees. So this is just the job I'm on. Um, maybe you can see as I walk around. Okay this floor is still drying out and you can see where the unit heating pipes are. So I try to keep them about 6 inches off the wall. Um, 150 millimeters and about 8 inches apart. Well, it's about 200 millimeters. And the reason it's four draw that wall is because there is pipes running down to feed the ends. So there is actually heating there as well. And the rest of the floor is kind of dried out, you can't really see it now. But I broke this room into three zones. It's a big ass room. And it was a lot of leaks and a lot of problems and I have them all solved. 